All right, so we're going to do the eighth and final video for the affordable house. Uh, this video is going to include um, putting the house on the site plan um, and doing some essentially some site work. So uh, this is the status of the house right now. Uh, I just want to go through and make sure that your sheets are set up correctly. So cover sheet, we haven't touched that yet. Site plan, that's actually going to be done on a separate uh, drawing. Uh, lots of reasons for that, but just put that in there as a placeholder. The room plan, so this is the, the whole room with, uh, you know, if you want to show your, your um, furniture, you can. Uh, what I just realized is that kind of looks a little bit uh, messy. So if you go to the room plan here, you can you know, right click and say uh, hide in view category. It just hides all the furniture, just makes it look a bit cleaner. Um, kind of up to you uh, how you want that to be. All right, and then uh, so that's the room plan. Floor plan definitely is a bit busy, but that's just the nature of a floor plan. Section plan, so that shows you all the different sections for the kitchen and baths. Um, elevations, your outside elevations, um, your sections and schedules, your uh, exterior wall section, interior wall schedule, section, area, room schedule, uh, door and window schedules kitchen and bath elevations, and the electrical plan. All right, so um, let's go ahead, make sure you hit save, just in case you changed anything by accident. Hopefully you didn't, um, because the truth is that the site plan is actually done in a separate file. So let's go ahead and close all of these tabs. All right, I want to keep Revit itself open, close all that. All right, so if you go to the Google Classroom, um, I've got it in my folder here, but uh, if you just go to the Google Classroom, you're gonna wanna download this, um, this Revit file. This is the, uh, the site plan file. So download, all right, and then make sure wherever your affordable house plan is. So I've got you know a separate um, CDA affordable house folder. Um, I wanna put the, File I just downloaded, so I go to downloads. I want to make sure I put it in the same folder. All right, so I'm going to be linking these two documents, so I want to make sure that they're in the same folder so that they link properly. So if I open the site plan, it, you might have to do an update because I think it's currently in uh, Revit 2020 version. So if you're using 2020, it's going to open right away. If you're using 2021, it's going to update to that new version. All right, so here's the site plan. Uh, it's in Noblesville, Indiana, between uh, the corner of Maple and 10th Street. Um, all right, so let's just go straight for it. So uh, if you're gonna put it in, you're going to hit insert, link Revit, and then you need to go find your file. So mine's, I put mine on the desktop, CA affordable house, uh, affordable house plan, and then here it is. Make sure you don't choose one of these, the numbered ones as the backup file, make sure you, you choose the actual affordable house plan. Say open. And there you go, it just throws it in there. So it looks like everything's good and you can just move it around and do what you want. Um, also, uh, looks a little bit funky with the words and everything. Um, if I can remember how to fix that, I will. Let's see, um, let's hit save, head on back to the uh, affordable house, just that. All right. Um, trying to see why. So if I click here on the range um, and I edit the type, label, show label. So you might want to, if you turn that off, hit OK. Same thing with like the dishwasher. If you edit the type and hit show label, hit apply, okay. Um, let's just see just with those two, if that makes a difference. So hit save, close it, open up the site plan. Zoom in. So yeah, the range in the site, okay. So that, that can help clean it up. Um, also, Let's see, am I able to hide certain aspects of it? 
Oh, edit type, room bounding. What if I say okay? Why okay? Oh, all right, let's just turn that off. Okay. All right, um, so if you want to get rid of the refrigerator, microwave, washer, dryer, all that kind of stuff, you can do just what I did earlier. All right, so the point is you can move it anywhere you want on the site. We're going to kind of talk about a little bit of that later. But first, before I do any of the locating it on the site, I want to make sure it's actually on the site. So what I mean by that, go to your east elevation, and you see here's my site all the way up here, and here's my house all the way down here. So let's try to figure out what just happened. So what happened is that in Noblesville, Indiana, the elevation of the ground is approximately 770, 769 feet above sea level. So, you know, again, the concept of the idea is that, you know, sea level on the East Coast or West Coast um, is, you know, at sea level, like when you're um, on the coast. And then as you come inland, the ground just goes up and up and up, slow and steady, sometimes fast over mountains, but um, either way, to the point where you're in the middle of the country or towards the middle of the country, you're 770 feet above sea level. Um, just the way, you know, the, low, the, the land slopes as you go further inland. So we need to get our house up to that elevation. Uh, first, before we do any of that, we want to make sure it's oriented correctly. Um, so I know just the way my house is designed, this is where my front door is. And you typically want your front door facing the main street. So I, I need to choose is... 10th Street, my main street, or is uh, Maple Street, my, my main street? Um, kind of depends on how you want it. Also, remember, 10th Street is facing west, and Maple Street is facing north. Do I want my front door of my house facing west or north? Um, again, kind of your decision. Um, west will get a lot of afternoon sun, meaning I'll get, you know, through the back of the house, I'll get a lot of morning sun uh, through the front of the house, I'll get a lot of afternoon sun if I face it east-west. Um, and then if I have a, the, the front door facing north, I'll get a lot of, you know, the southerly facing is what you get, you know, constant sun essentially. So do I want the constant sun on the side of the house or the um, front of the house? Also wind for the most part, wind in this area will come out of the west. So I don't want the front of the house to get a lot of wind or I don't want the side of the house. Um, I'm going to go through... Uh, just for no other reason that I've always done it facing north. For this time, I'm going to do it facing west, just because. Just so what I want to do. I want to have some good um, afternoon sun. Uh, morning sun I want in the back of the house, and more, um, afternoon sun I want in the front of the house. All right, offset. So the 25-foot building line, The usually a town will require, you know, um, again, city or town, depending on, where you live, they a lot of times require the house to be offset from the edge of the pavement uh, about you know wh whatever the, the town requires. Here it says 25 feet. All right, so um, I never know why, but this file it says 25 foot building line, but it never shows an actual line. So if you measure from here, just not use that that one. Measure from here, go in 25 feet. So about here is as close as I can get it to that uh, edge. So if I wanted to do that, and then again, from here, 25 feet is about here. So I prefer mine to be a little further away from the, uh, the intersection, uh, but I want a reasonable size backyard. So right there. And the other thing is, and depending on um, the town, you can have, if you prefer to have your driveway come in off the alleyway, that way your driveway can be a little less busy. You know, it can be easier to get in and out of the house. I think that's what I'm going to do because it's easier to pull out onto an alley than it is to um, pull out onto a main road. All right, so I think my driveway is going to come off of here, personally. Um, all right, so now that I have it, the, the reason I did that first is I want to know where the highest point of my house is. And to me, about here is the highest point. It's close. It's halfway between 769, uh, the elevation line, and 770. So I'm going to say the top of my, the highest point of my house is about 769 and a half. All right. Um, and so here we're going to have 
uh, a little bit of computation to do. So, um, because we need to figure out exactly how high the house is gonna need to be or what elevation the, the house is gonna need to be. So I'm gonna need to get a um, piece of paper out and switch over to a camera so I can do a little bit of calculation to show you how to do this. All right, so let's go back here. So, as I said, the top of my house, the highest ground elevation near my house is approximately, I'll just draw a line here and say it's 769 feet and six inches. So if we remember, you know, the foundation of the house, imagine we're, we're cutting through here this is the foundation of the house, and then we have our our sill, our our uh, rim joist, and then we have our. So this is the foundation wall. Let's recall that foundation wall. That's our rim joist, our two by six rim joist. This is our two by 10 floor joist. And in order for water not to come in here, we wanted this to be about eight inches above the ground level, okay? But when I drew my house, this is my floor level which is currently set at zero feet in my house. So if we recall, this is 10 and three quarters of an inch. This is one and a half inch. And so what I need to figure out is what this elevation is so I can go above that. So I gotta add these up, so eight, and nine and a half and 10 and three quarters. So nine and a half and 10 and three quarters. So without a calculator, that's two and a quarter. So that's 19, if I add those together, 19 and five quarters, which is really 20 um, and, five, and one quarter of an inch. All right, so I need to add 20 and one quarters of an inch to seven, six, nine and six inches. So again, without a calculator, 769 feet and six inches and converting this to feet and inches. This is one foot, eight and one quarter of an inch. So I'm adding one foot, eight and one quarter inch. So that would be 770 and uh, six and eight makes 14 and a quarter inches, which is really 771 feet, two and a quarter inches. All right, so that's what I want this elevation to be set at. So 771, two and a quarter. All right, um, so let's head on back here. Go to my east elevation, go all the way up here, and I'm going to, uh, like, first of all, let's figure out where is level one currently set at? So is it down here? Nope. Not really sure where level one is set at. Uh, I'm looking for it and I can't see it. Is it up here? Level two. Well, that's kind of frustrating because I can't see where it is. Um, so we'll just move on. Um, so I'm going to put in a level. And to do that, you put in, nope, okay. So um, over here from the architecture tab, it's level. I'm going to just put in a random level all the way up here. And we're going to call that 
Um, so rename, where's rename? All right, just go over here, level three, rename and call that uh, floor first floor level. Would you like to rename corresponding level and views? Yes. And then uh, I'm gonna set that at the elevation I calculated, 771 and 2.25. There we have it. I'm gonna make sure it went far enough out so I can see it there. And then I'm gonna put in one more level because remember I said that the highest point is approximately Um, so rename this, uh, we're going to go, uh, top ground level, the highest level member of my ground. So yes, rename. And I said that was about, uh, 769.5, 769.6 inches. All right, so now what I wanna do is take the house, just drag it up. Okay. And then remember, this is where my first floor is. So I can use the align command to make, so again, you click what you wanna align it to first, and then what you want to align first floor down to that. Okay, so now my first floor is pretty much right there. And so I can go to 3D view of my house and see, yep, the foundation wall and the highest point, remember, was this corner. Looks good. But you see an issue. It looks like I updated part of my house, not all of my house. Remember the part of the house, the part where the section is, I brought the siding all the way down to protect it. I didn't do that with the other three sides. So escape, let's go ahead and hit save. Close, 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 close. Go back to the affordable house. Let's cut a few quick sections. So I've already done this side. That's the back side of my house. Let's do this side. Um, let's do another one here. Uh, I don't really care. I'm cutting through a window. These are going to be deleted. And I'm going to do one more here. All right, so double click on section one. Go down here, hit fine. Oh, you see there's a couple issues. The wall's not quite lined up where it needs to be, so glad I did this. Um, click on the wall, click align outside edge of the floor and there. Center the foundation wall, center the footing. All right, that's all lined up appropriately. Now click on the wall, drag this down so it matches up right about there. All right, go to section two, same thing. Uh, switch it over to fine, align, outside edge of the floor, outside edge of that, center of the wall, center of the footing. Drag the siding down so it gets to there. All right, one more time. Switch it over to fine, align, outside edge of the floor, go here, whoops. Center of the wall, I apologize. Outside edge to outside edge. Center of the foundation wall, the center of the foot, and that's the centers I was trying to do. And then outside edge here, down. All right, now I can delete these sections. So hit delete, click delete, click delete. Hit save. And now close it. Now reopen the site plan. And now when we zoom in around, there we go. Now our house, it's all covered up. Everything's aligned, perfect. Okay, so I see the foundation wall, but I don't see the rim choice, I don't see the floor, um, just the way it should be. Okay, so remember this is the top, the highest point, 
But now this is the front of my house oops, and side of my house and everything like that. Okay, so um, now my, my house is placed on the site. Now let's go to the site plan. And we need to actually put in uh, driveway and all kinds of you know walkways and, and this house is accessible. So remember we need to put in some ramps uh, and then plantings. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So go to mass and siting. Um, and so for the driveway, we want to do subregion, and you can draw straight lines, curved lines, whatever kind of lines you want. Uh, a two car uh, a driveway is wide enough for two cars, typically about 20 feet wide. So, and then also this is a pole. So make sure you, you don't like put the, the driveway right here. Make sure you, you avoid the, the pole, the utility pole. So I'm going to also just as a kind of warning, don't put it right on the edge here. It's going to look a little weird, but just make sure you're off of the um, edge of the, the concrete a little bit or the, the asphalt drive uh, for the, um, what's it called? Uh, the alleyway. All right. So come up here. Um, so again, 20 feet and then, uh, cause I, I came in, I didn't even measure, measure it. So I should have measured this here, here, five feet. So, oops, uh, go back to, where's my drawing? Oh, there it is. So 25 feet and then to here. I want to line it up nice. Okay. Close it off. And then I can round some of my edges. So here to here, round that. So let's delete that, delete that. Oops. Turn this back. Um, and then also let's make this more of like an apron here. So that will just kind of make it look a little better. Did that work? Nope. That's not going to line up nice. Eh, maybe it will. Hopefully we'll see if I get an error. All the better, then you get to experience my issue and uh, watch me correct it. All right, so hopefully that's that's correct. Um, okay. Bring this back, bring this over. Not sure what's going on there. Let's try this again. Okay. So let's try this again. Okay. So if everything's okay, I'll hit the green check mark and it will be just fine. Okay. Well, it worked. Um, and so when you go to 3D view, you see that this is all kind of green. And you see that site grass. So I separated this out and by default, it's just nothing. It just goes to brown. So you can change the material. And if you hit the three but three dots button and you can go to, uh, you should be able to find asphalt. All right. Okay. Now I've got an asphalt driveway. Kind of small, but um, don't doesn't need anything huge. Um, all right, before I put in my walkways, I want to put in some ramps. Okay, so I want to do a ramp for the front door and the back door, make sure they're both accessible. And um, all right, so go to the this level here. All right, and so if you go to architecture, you can go to ramp. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the base level you want to be, and this is why we uh, 
named it this way. Uh, let's see, top of ground level, and you want to go up to the first floor level. And it kind of does it for you. So when you click, that's how long the ramp needs to be. So you can do one continuous run if you want, or you can do kind of a switchback. Uh, this, for me, is kind of small enough where it seems like one continuous run. Here's the door. If I do, if I start it back, you know what? Um, I'm going to have a, a walkway coming this way, so I'm going to do part of it coming this way, click, and then come over here. And I, let me try this again. Nope, don't. Um, let's delete. Let's try it again. So run. So we're going to go from here to here and then switch over. And I want to go a little bit longer. Sorry, I keep on making, but this is kind of just the way it goes. All right, let's try it again. So here to here. And then as soon as I get to the corner of the house, I'm going to switch it over here to, I know, I will, this is important. You want to leave off the last little bit so you can do, um, kind of uh, the entry to the house. All right, and then click, and then green check mark. And there you go, go back to the 3D view. And there's kind of your ramp, okay? Um, you will notice that it might be, if I kind of zoom around here, remember this elevation is a little high, uh, lower than the, the 769 and a half. So if I click on this, and I do the base offset, maybe if I push it down six inches, so negative zero space six is down six inches, hit apply, the ramp is not long enough, uh, change the slope or increase the length of the ramp. Okay, so let's go back here. So I need to increase the length of the ramp, edit sketch. All right. So just drag that out a little bit with the green check mark. Show related warnings. The ramp is not long enough. Um, show close close. So let's try it one more time. See if I can get it to be long enough now. Green check mark. All right. So now I've got it far enough that it's not going to be a problem. All right. So go back to 3D view. What I'm trying to see is if it's still floating in the middle of air. And if I get down just so it is a little bit still floating. So let's go down eight inches. Apply. Okay. So is it touching the ground now? It seems to be touching the ground. Let's go down 10 inches. I might need to extend it a little bit further. Hit apply. Okay, so that's perfect. That's almost perfect. So um, let's go back here and double click on the ramp and then drag this out hit the green check mark go back here all right now and maybe it's even buried a little bit um i know it's definitely long enough and now i need to line it up correctly since i didn't quite do that so i can use I click on it just use my mouse keys so i line it up on the door and I don't want that gap to the front door, so bring it this way. Okay. So now it is lined up where it needs to be. So I have an official ramp going to the front door, now you want to the back door. Okay. So go back here. Uh, this one I'll do kind of a switch back on. So go to architecture, ramp. Um, again, from the top of ground level to the first floor level, the run. So I kind of estimated it being close to the end of the driveway. I might need to do a little concrete patio. But the door, remember, is like right here. So let's see. That's pretty close. So let me just take it. Uh, let's try this one more time. Leave a little bit more of a space. And that is lined up kind of in the middle of the door, which is kind of what I want. And then bring it over here to there and hit the green check mark. This way I can 
move it close to where I want it. And I can put a little concrete patio kind of landing area here. Let's check it out in 3D. Lined up almost right where I want it. Click on the ramp, use the arrows to put it back. There you go. And then let's kind of be nice and careful and see how much if it is floating. It is floating a decent amount too. Uh, all right, so let's go here, click on the ramp, and it needs to go down zero, uh, negative zero, 10. Try putting it down 10 inches, hit apply, so I'm gonna get that error again. Let's go back to 3D view. All right, so it's buried quite a bit. So let's, un let's bring it back up uh, six inches. Apply, let's bring up a little more, say four inches. Okay, so the magic number seems to be five. Okay. Uh, but we do need to extend it a little bit. So five inches. So if in case we're not remembering the code is it uh, so it's able to be easy easily gone up. Uh, one inch per one inch of rise per 12 inches of run. So one inch for every foot of run. So if I went down five inches, I got to go out another five feet, which that's almost a, a five foot gap there. So if I go here, uh, click on the ramp, double click on it and then drag it out. So it says, five, yeah, and it says that right there, five feet remaining. So I dragged it out. Um, I, I increased it five feet. So right now it's 15 foot six, I need 20 foot six. All right, and hit the green check mark, and now we're good. So it actually comes into the driveway a little bit, which is totally fine. Um, all right, and I could. So something I could try to do is, if I wanted to, I could uh, go this way. That was four foot nine, and then I could bring this over a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is I could actually um, shorten the ramp a bit. And then hit the green check mark. Oh, not long enough anymore. Hit the green check mark. All right, so now it is. So now I can have a, a little bit of a concrete landing. Let me double check. See if that works. Okay, good. So go to 3D view. All right. That's all good. Now I can do a little bit of concrete patio work. So let's go back here. So again, go to Nassen site, um, subregion. So I'm going to start here. Go kind of underneath the start of that. Not quite to the edge of the house. I want to leave a little gap. And why not go to the end of the, but then you do need to bring it all the way back around to close it off. All right, so there's like a patio area. And if you did want like a another kind of patio area just for relaxing, having fun. Um, we do another one back here. Maybe a little walkway that connects the two. Hit escape. So there's a little gap there. So I'm just gonna make one large connected area. And so let's see, uh, let me cut from, let's see, which one is it? Split element with a gap, nope. Um, I wanna bring 
bring this back to here. That's fine. All right, let's try it this way. That's frustrating. I don't know why that happened. All right, square that off. Is that neat? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's measure this. Four foot. I want to make this five. It's even five foot. Same thing here. foot. That's two foot. Let's make that five foot. That's going to give me an error. It's going to overlap there. So if I do this, yeah, overlapping. Uh, cancel. So let's drag that back in. Yeah, just the way it is. All right, hit the green check mark. And now that can just be a nice big concrete patio. So change that to poured concrete. Where is con oh, concrete cast in place? Concrete cast in place. Okay. So now, if you look in 3D view, there's your concrete patio and walkway around the house. Okay. Concrete cast in place. And depending on how you look at it, so here's realistic. So there we go. Uh, last couple things to do is plantings. So, depending on what the uh, what kind of privacy or just kind of plantings you want. Um, so you go to architecture component. Some uh, plantings are already loaded for you. So this is just like, you know, deciduous type trees. Um, so you can do that. Uh, but if you want to do more, the family um, planting. So one thing is you know, the same deciduous trees, if you want to see how they look like in the fall, if you want conifers or like evergreens, if you want smaller shrubs, um, open that. So I'm going to do, let's see, the fall because it just looks nicer when it's in sometimes with a, and this is a pretty large tree. 60 foot tree that's very large uh dogwoods are kind of nice for color purposes for privacy purposes one thing that works really well is um the evergreens the conifer so if we use i don't know this we can do a set of plantings along the front let me do it this way Component this way you can have some nice privacy in your house in case uh, if this street is super busy. And you can do, you know, as much as you want with this. This is just, this kind of stuff is optional. Go to 3D view, see how it looks. You know, uh, one area where there's, you know, possibly a lot of visibility is over here. So again, it's up to you. Uh, let's see, component. Go to family. Let's see. Nope. Mass. I was just trying to see if there was a fence, but 
I'm not sure. Um, all right, so I'm not going to spend much more time on that. Um, the very, very last thing. So, or not very, very last thing, but uh, a couple more things. Uh, in terms of when you've done your site drainage, you need to kind of redo a little bit of the grading so the um, any kind of increased runoff from, from all this stuff doesn't drain onto the street and cause issues. So I'm gonna make a little kind of drainage ditch right here. So this is all 169 or lower. So I'm gonna, uh, again, go to mass and siting, topo surface. And uh, so 769, oops, 769, 869, 769. Um, hit enter. And so start here where it already is 769 and then kind of build up a bit. So that's just kind of matching the existing grade. And then, so this is kind of building up a little bit here. And now I'm gonna lower the grade. So seven, 68. So we're kind of making like a little drainage swale here or drainage ditch. And then 767. And gonna go back up to 770. Let's see, I had 770 along this line. And try to match tie in with the existing 770 here. Okay. Um, All right, so let's see kind of how this looks. Go back to the 3D view. It's kind of hard to tell much. Um, uh, I'm gonna switch it back to grass, so site grass. Hit okay. Okay. Hmm. Trying to see. Oh, and maybe I should have split the surface to see exactly how that looks. I'm not sure. Either way, when you go back to site plan, there it is. Okay. Um, so now go to your, the sheet should already be there for you. Here it is. So that's your A101, your site plan. Um, and then the other thing that you can do it's up to you how detailed of a view you want. Um, if you go to 3D view, you can try to take like a screenshot um, of your house in its site plan uh, or one thing you can try. And um, I might have to come back and do a, an extra video on this is how to take, there's a way to do like a kind of picture type thing. Um, but this is for your your cover page uh, of your um, of your project. So let's see uh, view. Is it view? Da, da, da. Modify. Analyze. All right, I'm gonna come back in um, in another, or, you know, add on to this video to show you how to do this. All right. All right. So to do a view of the house, what you do is if you go to the view tab and go to 3D view, you can do a camera, 
And uh, I noticed if I do it here, it's uh, a bit too far away. So I'm going to do one here. I see nothing shows up. I'm going to go back here and do another one. View camera. Go a little bit closer. Again, nothing shows up. So let's go back here and, and try to explain why. So if I go back here, uh, it's the elevation. I elevation is five feet. Remember the elevation of my whole place was um, 770-ish. So it's five foot six. So let's say it's 775.5. And same thing here, 775.5. So pi. And then still nothing really. So let's make the box a bit bigger. Oops, didn't happen. What happened? 775.5. 775.5. Hit apply. There we go. And so there's the house. All right. Uh, the street and everything. It's also in this perspective view. So things that are closer um, show up bigger. Things that are smaller show up smaller. Um, so you can change that if you want to. So you see here where it says perspective, you can change it to orthographic if you want. And that kind of shows in that view. And then the other thing you can do is change it so that it is in oops, all right, consistent colors. You can do ray trace or realistic. So it's going to take a while. Um, and as soon as this stops having issues, I will show the other one. Also, you kind of see that you see underground, so not exactly what you want, maybe. Uh, so I can drag that up, but that's a much, much better view. Okay, uh, you might have to close that. Uh, and then this one's a much closer view. So zoom that out. And again, if I switch from perspective to orthographic, depends on how you like to see it. I'll keep it in perspective. Apply. Uh, I can hide this tree. Hide and view element. Hide and view element. Just got Few too many trees right in my face here. Add view element. All right. Um, I can go up a little bit higher. Uh, let's go 780. See what it looks like at 780 before I do any kind of rendering. All right. So I'm kind of looking down on the house a little bit more now. Kind of is nicer. 785. 785. I kind of like that. It's kind of looking down on the house a bit more so I can get a better feel for it um, before I go to any kind of rendering. Go to realistic. Yeah, save the project. So I can take a screenshot of that. Uh, you can do ray tracing, get much more detailed. Or if you really want to go nuts, you can do a render. So close that. So again, you can do a screenshot if you want. You can close it. Um, you can do render, creates photorealistic image of the building. Um, you know, it's all about lighting and stuff. Um, so sun only, you can do Sun and artificial light. So let's do sun only. Screen, draft. Let's do medium. Let's see how long this takes. Sky, few clouds. You can do very cloudy, no clouds, few clouds. Let's do a few clouds. Um, render. And this is where you're really kind of seeing how like an architectural firm creates these images. You see a lot of them for main township, all that kind of stuff for the different views of the buildings. Um, if your computer can handle that processing power, there you go. Um, 
you know, maybe if I went down a little further, or, you know, I could pick a better view, I'm sure. But then again, the whole point is to take a screenshot and then you can insert this in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, let's say portable house desktop, put that right here in the portable house, uh, portable house render. Save that there. You know, export it to affordable house. Uh, render. That's going to save as a JPEG. Render two. Um, make sure you. Uh, take a, you know, print this. So um, print Adobe PDF properties. Let's say smallest file size. 11 by 17. Okay. Preview. Hit print. Okay. Let's say A one one site plan. All right, so that's been made. Uh, now I can close all of this. Yep, save. So there's my site plan. Uh, open up my affordable house now. And just update the cover sheet. Insert. Uh, Insert from file, insert views from file, desktop, CDA. Hmm. Yeah, there I go. That's what I wanted. Hit open. Does not contain any views. I can insert this. Try another. Okay, insert image. That's what I should have done. Affordable house render two. That's pretty big. I'm going to have to. Put that down a little bit. All right, and now I just want to uh, put in some information about my project. Let's go to annotate text. Let's see if it's just gonna. I want to do quarter inch. Um, uh, CEA affordable house project. Uh, then your name. Eight. Uh, currently, I'm doing this. It is October 27, 2020. Uh, let's see. Um, Main East High School, and then uh, draw do a, a drawing list. List. All right, so let's see. Insert that tells me we should be able to do uh, a list of sheets somehow. Um, architecture annotate. See. Analyze um, schedules, maybe.
All right, I'll come back and do that. All right, so uh, I put in this text so far. Should probably line it up a little bit better. Let's I can do better than that. Close. I keep on doing that. All right, grab that and then drag it up. Okay. All right, so there is a way to do a sheet list like this as a schedule. So you go to the View tab, you go to Schedules, Sheet List. Uh, I want the sheet numbers. I want the sheet name. That's really it. So hit OK. So there I go, the sheet list. So double click here. Drag, oh, let's do this first. Go here. Um, let's adjust the size a bit. All right, uh, appearance, let's edit that, thin lines. Quarter inch aerial, header, quarter inch aerial, okay. Let me see how that looks if I try to drag that out. Oof, very large. Uh, let's see if I can. Oops, didn't want to break it. Maybe I need to resize it a little bit. Where it will fit, possibly. Okay. Yep, it'll fit as long as I Move all this stuff up. There we go. And there is a good cover sheet. So you can uh, print this. So you go to again, uh, first of all, save. Print. Adobe PDF, properties, smallest file size, only difference is 11 by 17, okay. Um, combine multiple views uh, into a single file, that's fine. Selected uh, views by sh um, sheets. So I want to select all the sheets. Uh, remember, I've done 101 as a separate file already. So just the one, all the other ones, say OK. Um, sure, yes, set one, OK. Um, and it might not let you do a preview, so hopefully you'll be able to do this. Yep, print them all. And there we go. Oh, looks like I forgot to do something that's going to print all separate um, files. I did want to have it save as one continuous PDF file. So what I was hoping was if I do print, let's try this again. WPDF. Uh, so it, I forgot. I it was originally checked this, and then I um, I didn't realize that it had uh, created separate files. So create uh, combine multiple selected views into a single set. So there I go. Um, now I've hit OK. Might take a little bit longer. Affordable house, and it's going to put them all into one drawing file now. But it might take quite a bit longer. The um, computer might get bogged down. Either way. All right. So. That's it. You're done with the project.